changing your self-concept is also about expanding your nervous system. Your nervous system's capacity to hold more, to experience more, to be receptive to more than what you're, you currently are receptive to. Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Lorena, I'm a self-concept coach and I support women to shift their self-concept, step into a new identity and essentially bridge the gap between who they currently are and who they desire to become. Because when you step into that version of yourself and you fully embody her, anything you desire is possible and goes along with that. And if you enjoy learning about your self-concept, manifestation, spirituality, shadow work, subconscious reprogramming, and all that good stuff, then please stick around, leave a like on this video, leave a comment, and if you want to see more videos like this, I invite you to also subscribe and switch on the notification bell. And if you want to dive deeper into my work, I invite you to check out the description box below where there's a bunch of links with free resources and masterclasses for you to dive into so that you can either get started on your self-concept journey or just feel more supported in it. Today we are going to be doing a little deep dive into the role that the nervous system plays in the manifestation process. This video has actually been requested quite a few times, so I'm excited to bring this to you. And it's really a topic that's not talked about enough in the manifestation community. It's been getting more and more more recently, but even what is talked about when it comes to the connection between the nervous system and manifestation, it's very surface level from what I have seen at least. It's basically people maybe giving you techniques to regulate your nervous system or just telling you to regulate your nervous system. But the thing is, you need to know, first of all, what that even means. And it's a process that goes so much deeper than just having a few practices and techniques. I remember when I used to first get into nervous system work and I got into this through breath work. I've been teaching breath work for four years now and I thought having all these practices in my toolbox was enough, but really it isn't. <laughs> because getting to know your nervous system, and currently I'm even getting to know my own nervous system on a whole different level, that's a process that doesn't just come through practices because we all have different nervous systems as well and different things work for different people. But just knowing that you need to regulate your nervous system is often not enough. It's like people telling you to just shift your state, which often means that you're just scratching the surface because you have a conceptual idea of what it is and you might have some practices and techniques in your toolbox, but the deeper integration needs to happen too. And having some calming or breathwork practices or techniques or some nervous system regulation tools, that is really this much of what I'm going to be talking about today. If you want to learn a bit more about how the body connects to manifestation in general, I'm going to link a few videos below that you can watch after this one if you haven't seen them yet because they all go hand in hand. So the first thing that I want to talk about is your state of being, which is a word that you hear a lot about in the manifestation community because it is what manifests. What manifests is not just thought or assumption or belief or your mindset. It's your entire state of being that manifests. Your reality is a manifestation or a projection of your state of being. And that's primarily because it is your state of being that already encompasses and embodies different beliefs and assumptions and emotional states and thoughts perceptions and so on. And a lot of manifestation teachings are about changing your thoughts or changing your feelings or changing your assumptions or using your imagination. And the reason I don't teach manifestation this way, but the reason I have a very intentional process that goes a lot, a lot deeper, that goes deep into your subconscious and really reprograms it at the root through emotional integration and all the nervous system stuff that I'll be talking about today is because the thoughts and the feelings are a result of the state rather than the other way around. So it's a little bit as if you go to the doctor and you get a pill which alleviates the symptoms so you do feel better, but 
the disease isn't cured. I'm here to cure the disease. This is a metaphor. I'm not a doctor and I do not give medical advice. FYI. Now, why am I sharing this in connection to the nervous system? It's because your state of being is directly connected to your nervous system because your nervous system state is your state of being. Think about the comparison between when your nervous system is in a state of activation and it's really hard for you to even think objectively. It's really hard for you in the state to not give in to your reactions and your triggers and your emotions. But when your nervous system is in a state of regulation and calm and peace, you're automatically able to think better thoughts, feel better feelings, see things objectively and so on. So that's why nervous system regulation is important. And what is also important is that you can actually work with your nervous system to release and heal trauma. And that is a very, very important aspect of just healing in life, but it's also an important aspect for your self-concept and manifestation journey. For me as a coach, it was really important for me to get trained in trauma resolution modalities and to be a trauma-trained practitioner. And that's because we all have trauma and it actually plays a huge role in the manifestation process. And people don't really like to talk about this because it's not sexy, it's not fun, but a big part of the manifestation process is about healing trauma. And that's not because you need to be fully healed to manifest because you don't. It's just because the resistance that is blocking you from receiving is often, if not always, born out of trauma unhealed trauma. So if you ignore your trauma and you suppress it further, it may just lead you to stay more in resistance and to stay blocked in certain ways. So healing trauma is a really important part of the manifestation process for that reason. It's the biggest chunk of the work that I do with my clients and the process I lead them through. My approach is very somatic. It includes a lot of emotional integration work and shadow work and subconscious reprogramming work. It's incredibly important to do this work with your emotions in order to step into a new self-concept and sustain it and in order to manifest successfully because it's the emotions, the emotional charges, the fear of what you may be feeling, what you may experience in the future that often holds you back from fully claiming the desires that you want and that are meant for you. The thing is as well, when we don't regulate our nervous system and we don't work with healing the trauma, releasing the trauma, integrating all parts of ourselves, when we don't do that, you have to remember you're likely in some state of activation. Our world is not conducive to being completely regulated. That's just not what our society, our environment is meant for or made for. And it would be nice if we could all live naked in the forest <laughs> and have a completely regulated nervous system and sleep under the stars. But that's not the world we live in anymore. And of course, there's good and bad, right? I'm not complaining either. We have a lot of comfort in the world we live in, but it's not great for having a regulated nervous system. So most of us, despite the trauma, most of us are in a slight state of activation or dysregulation all the time anyway. But the problem is, Manifestation is about thriving, not about surviving. And yet, when your nervous system is dysregulated, you're actually in a state of survival. You're not even able to go for the bold, big desires that you may have. You're not able to embrace all possibilities that there are, and you're not able to claim the future that you deserve and desire to have because you're currently just trying to survive. And a regulated nervous system also means that you're able to take things in. You approach your triggers and undesirable circumstances completely differently because you're not reacting to things that are happening as much. You're not reacting to your triggers as much and even when you are, you don't really stay in them long. You're able to transmute them really, really quickly, which is the reality for me also. It's not that I never ever get triggered or activated. It's absolutely human, but I have such a strong process of alchemy that I move myself through every time that I'm out of the trigger in like a few minutes and I have actually transformed it into something else. I have then transformed the undesirable emotion and the emotional charge into something that serves me. Speaking about survival and being in a state of survival, 
this is also a lot about safety and receptivity. Because if your body, if your nervous system is constantly in a state of alert, looking for a threat, looking for the next bad thing that could happen, waiting for the shoe to drop, you're not going to feel safe to receive. You're not going to be able to receive. And you can tell yourself that you want to receive and that you're okay with it and that you feel safe with it as much as you want. If your state of being is not aligned with that, it's not happening. Or it could also just be that you have some trauma associated with receiving a particular desire and that's why it doesn't feel safe to do so. But if you don't feel safe to receive the very thing you want, you're going to repel it. You're going to repel it energetically and physically. So you are resisting the very thing you want because there is something inside of you that doesn't feel safe with that manifestation. Even if that doesn't make conscious or logical sense to you. And that's because the subconscious is in the nervous system as well. So I always like to remind you that the bulk of the fears and the thoughts and the beliefs that you operate from are ones that are hidden in your subconscious. They are ones that you're not aware of. So it's very much possible that you're energetically repelling something that you want without even being aware of the fact that you're repelling it. And that happens through your state through your nervous system state, your state of being, because it then energetically repels what you want or physically repels what you want because your subconscious doesn't feel safe with it and your nervous system doesn't feel safe with it. So, of course, the answer to this is to create safety in your nervous system so that you do feel safe to receive. But here's what's important also. Safety is not the same for everyone. We all have different trauma. We all have different backgrounds, different paths. We all have different nervous systems. We all have different things that make us feel safe. What feels safe to me might not feel safe to you and the other way around. And that's why whilst it's great to have some regulation tools in your toolbox, it's a lot more important to work in a way that is personal to your nervous system. A lot of the things that you see online, little practices that you see on YouTube or even little courses that you get are more one size fits all. And that's not that they're necessarily bad, but you're gonna get a lot better results if it's a personalized approach. So let's go past beyond the regulation and the healing. Because that is everything that we're talking about now that we're wanting to get rid of, right? We're peeling the onion. We're getting rid of all the layers of your consciousness that are not aligned with what you want because they are protecting themselves. They are holding on to things or emotions or experiences from the past. But if you are wanting to change your self-concept, you're not just here to stay where you are. You don't want to stagnate, right? You want to expand. You want to transform. You want a future that's better than what you had in the past. Because regulating the nervous system and creating a sense of safety is only one aspect. You can feel calm and easeful and that doesn't necessarily line up with what you're wanting to expand into. If you want to create or manifest a reality that's different from your current one or better than your current one or bigger than your current one, then you need to fully embody that potential. So regulation, being in a regulated state, is the baseline. Having a sense of safety, that's the baseline. But you'll have to expand even past that. Now that is also connected to transforming your self-concept very closely because changing your self-concept is also about expanding your nervous system. Your nervous system's capacity to hold more, to experience more, to be receptive to more than what you're, you currently are receptive to. That also means stretching yourself, getting out of your comfort zone, doing things that are maybe risky, taking leaps of faith, doing things that scare you or that don't feel easy to do. And that expansion, that stretching, is obviously a lot easier with a regulated nervous system. Because if you're on alert, if you're in survival mode, it won't necessarily be the best to stretch yourself too far. That could actually re-traumatize you. This is also why in Recreate Yourself, my coaching program, the manifestation work, the embodiment work, the expansion work, that all comes after the integration, the emotional processing, the healing, the regulation. We're essentially creating a clean slate, a foundation that we can work with. It's like we're first building the foundation before we can build a new house. 
because otherwise the house is not going to last. And again, it requires a personalized approach because it all depends on your personal history, your trauma history, the emotional charges you hold on to or you even suppress, your current state, your life experience, and so much more. This expansion is essentially about becoming a different version of yourself. And that is far removed from your current self. So you may not even recognize yourself from your new self concept. You may look back and be like, wow, I have really changed. And no wonder I am now experiencing a reality that is so different and so much more expansive than what I've ever experienced before. Because my old identity was not available for that. My old self-concept was not available for that. You are embodying a new version of yourself and thereby a new reality. And as I said before, I have a very intentional process that I guide my clients through with this, which goes very deep into somatic and subconscious reprogramming. And a lot of that is nervous system work. So I hope you enjoyed this and got a lot out of this. Please leave me a comment and let me know what your main takeaway is from this video. And I will see you again in next week's videos.